prior to becoming business partners, we were colleagues and we both worked together. We had uh, W2 jobs and we were taking that money and we were independently investing in, in real estate. And in my situation, um, I was investing in short-term vacation rentals and I experienced a, a lot of success very quickly, particularly because my, my properties are in Hawaii and there's a strong barrier to entry and there's a lot of demand. And so I was able to uh, really step away from the rat race. I was able to become financially free after securing a couple of these properties. They're uh, four bedroom vacation rental homes, more on the luxury side. So from a financial perspective, uh, I was able to see the light and I thought, man, this is great. I got a taste of financial freedom. And uh, both of us have had a, a, passion, a passion for real estate for a long time. And so we wanted to collaborate. And so we started going through, um, we were researching ways in which we could invest. And most commonly it's through uh, you know, apartment buildings, multifamily real estate. There's a lot of education on it. And so we gravitated towards a course in which uh, we could learn how to invest in apartment buildings. Um, but the challenge that we found very quickly was we were comparing the returns, the cash flow of apartment buildings to what my vacation rentals were providing. And it just, it, it wasn't as exciting uh, from a cash flow perspective. It, it wasn't enough, uh, you know, in Nathan's situation to, to step away from, from his W-2. So we're like, you know, man, maybe is there a way where we can start scaling vacation rentals? And we hit a, we hit a couple of uh, dead ends, but so we, we went through this process of, of looking at apartment buildings, like I said, and we went and uh, we, there was a, there was an apartment building that was for sale here in, in Maui. And it was kind of strange because the, the listing broker uh, was providing details about how the property was operating. It was an apartment building, but it was uh, operating as a hostel previously. I guess the hostel had uh, shut down recently. And so they were marketing it for sale. It was, it was vacant or nearly vacant, but we thought, well, oh, that's weird. Hostel. Huh? What's that about? Um, ultimately that particular property ended up uh, going into contract before we had a chance to explore that route. But the agent um, communicated that, yeah, well, yeah, if you're interested in, in, you know, that side of the hostel, I'll find you a property. He was kind of this crazy wild guy. He reminded me of uh, the guy from uh, Better Call Saul, like that character, Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's the man. He oh. was Saul Goodman. We <laughs> never saw him, but man on the phone, this dude was Saul Goodman. It was crazy. High energy, just, just going after Bruh. it. Oh, and he was spinning it up, man. He was just, he, as soon as he found out that we, we might be interested in this concept, man, <laughs> every property, every property was a hostel. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, we, we were interested in buying apartment buildings, but just logistically our, our first step into that being in Hawaii, it was difficult to go explore purchasing apartment buildings in places, uh, you know, like in the Midwest or wherever you could typically get started for relatively, um, a nominal amount. And so we started in our backyard. We found that there weren't a lot of, of apartment buildings for sale. There's not a lot of inventory. Um, and so we were intrigued by this hostile concept um, and so we ended up purchasing a property, a, com a commercial retail property that had the correct zoning with the intention to convert it into a hostel. Um, but as you recall, this was uh, right before COVID. So as we started that process of going through the application uh, with the county to get permits and to go through this conversion process, COVID really put an end to that conversion because Financing was incredibly difficult to be able to um, not only get a loan, but to get a loan to convert a building. And especially since we didn't have any experience with hostels, it just, it was, you know, trying to get financing during COVID for a hostel was like not going to happen. Right. Um, but when one door closes, maybe another door opens. And so we didn't want to give up on this idea because there was another hostel on Maui that provided a great, um, uh, you know, an opportunity to evaluate, like, is this, is this a real thing? Can, can, can this be an opportunity? We kind of ran the numbers based on what we anticipated this person's bed count was, and we could see that what their rates were online. And so, you know, we put the, the numbers together and we're like, dang, dude, there's some, there's some opportunity in hostels. So we didn't want to give up on this. We ended up, um, literally door knocking. We went to, uh, you know, every hostel that was 
on island and we knocked on their doors and one of them uh, again this was during covid one of them uh, responded and the owner said yeah you know what the world is ending there's a lot of uncertainty i've been doing this for 20 something years i'm ready to be out i'm going to move to the mainland you guys want to buy this thing hey let's make a deal so that's how we ended up purchasing our first location in maui was buying uh, an existing hostel from a seller that was willing to provide seller financing. And we took over this property right when, right before the, the, you know, the page turned with COVID and we started to see a massive influx of travelers uh, right about, right about when we, you know, when we took over. So the timing was, was excellent from that perspective.